Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, just for your information, the uh, screencast is being recorded, so uh, if you miss anything um, or if you have colleagues who uh, wanted to attend but couldn't, <clears throat> uh, we should be able to put this up uh, somewhere where, where you can share it. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and dive in. Uh, my name is Frank Gomez, and uh, I'm the principal at Kinko Street Labs and uh, one of the primary developers of City Volunteer. Um, we're very excited to be releasing it today. Uh, we're excited to have uh, you join us uh, for City Day. It was kind of a nice confluence of events to have uh, the Civi Day and the Civi Volunteer release coincide. Um, so if you're if you're new to Civi CRM, uh, Civi Volunteer is uh, a plugin or an extension to Civi CRM, which uh, emphasizes the volunteer functionality that Civi CRM provides. Um, and also adds on a little more. Um, Civi Volunteer was developed a few years ago uh, by Ginkgo Street Labs, and the 2.0 version is being released today. Um, whenever possible, we try to stick close to the core and um, stick with established procedures and data structures, um, but you know, in some cases we've added uh, new entities and new screens, all of our own. And um, I'll just leave the list of features up here for, for you to read. Um, the, uh, the main features are the ability to uh, create volunteer opportunities, and with, with 2.0, there's now a nice um, sort of a shopping cart sign up where you can sign up for multiple features, of, uh, mul multiple volunteer opportunities at once. Um, so we're serving both ends here, um, volunteer coordinators as well as volunteers. Um, and some of the new features in 2.0 are uh, the ability to support chapter-based organizations. Uh, so, for instance, if uh, you were the Boys and Girls Club of America and you had chapters in every state, um, you'd be able to give them limited access to the system to create volunteer opportunities in, in their areas uh, without sort of opening up the gates uh, entirely to them. Um, also new in 2.0, uh, I mentioned already a shopping cart, uh, geographic searches to find opportunities near you, um, and um, right, and uh, also the ability to have volunteer opportunities associated with uh, an event or standalone. Um, and in, in version 1.0, that was uh, the only option was for volunteer projects to be associated with events. So uh, that's it for the slides. I thought we would just dive right into the, uh, to the demonstration. I'm going to start from the perspective of a volunteer manager, um, and then we'll jump back and forth a few times uh, to see how uh, my actions affect what volunteers would see and vice versa, how a volunteer registration um, would appear uh, to the coordinator. So as I mentioned, uh, Civi Volunteer now has its own home in Civi CRM. There's a top level menu here um, that allows you to jump right to things without having to uh, go to an event first or anything like that. So the first page I'll show you is the Manage Volunteer Projects page. And I, sh I should say, uh, if there are questions as we're going along, uh, 
please feel free to type them into the chat and we'll try to address them um, as part of the flow of the presentation. Um, so what we're looking at now is a list of uh, all of the volunteer opportunities that have been set up in the system. Um, this is analogous to maybe the Manage Events page, if you're familiar with that. Um, and so uh, I can filter these by campaign. Um, I can have uh, volunteer projects that benefit different organizations, and this is where the multi, uh, multi-tiered or chaptered system comes into play. Uh, and uh, also, if I'm logged in as the owner of the system, um, I'll see all of the opportunities that are listed here. If uh, we have kind of a tiered system and we've apportioned the permissions appropriately, then I would only see the volunteer opportunities uh, that pertain to my organization. Uh, so let's jump into creating a project. Uh, so we'll just call this river cleanup uh, and and again we can assign that to a campaign so maybe this is part of the MLK day of service and uh, we can either create a new location for this or if we've got locations in the system already, we can just uh, reuse an existing one. Save a little typing. Uh, the um, relationship section here uh, shows uh, different, different relationships with a volunteer project. So the owner has um, kind of all of the authority. They can uh, they can do pretty much anything with the volunteer project. Uh, they're also the only one uh, who can delete it. Um, the volunteer manager uh, will get, uh, has most of the same privileges, um, but they also get emails. Uh, they get CC'd when people register for uh, the volunteer project. So it's a good way um, to keep track of folks signing up. Um, they also, their information gets passed along to the volunteer when they register uh, so that they have someone to contact. Um, the beneficiary is who is benefiting from the volunteer project. Uh, and then we can add our own, so those three relationships ship out of the box uh, with Civi Volunteer. We can add our own relationships. Um, and uh, so it's a fairly extensible. Um, these relationships that you add yourself won't have uh, the same, um, there won't be any magic associated with them really, but um, it's useful perhaps for reporting. And you'll see that uh, some of these options are already defaulted as, uh, as I created this. So, um, the owner and the manager default to the currently logged in user. The beneficiary defaults to the employer of the logged in user. And if there isn't one, then it defaults to the domain organization. So whichever organization owns the city serum instance. Um, so the next section here is volunteer registration. This allows us to uh, specify questions on a per project basis. I might have uh, so this is a river cleanup. There might be specific questions I want to ask about this. You know, can you lift more than 20 pounds? Um, can you bring your own gloves? Something like that. Um, and uh, so we can preview those here. Um, and you can use more than one. Um, so let's go ahead and do Let's go ahead and, and use this one, and we'll add another profile here. Uh, 
and we'll use this for group registration. And uh, so one of the features that we added in Civi Volunteer 2.0 is the ability to register yourself and, and multiple friends or colleagues at a time. Uh, a typical use case is uh, suppose I'm uh, an HR person at Boeing or some, uh, some other organization that has a, a, an organized volunteer program um, and I want to bring myself and 20 of my coworkers uh, to a volunteer project. So I can use this, um, this second, uh, the group registration profile uh, allows a separate set of questions for, for the other participants. Um, we'll have a closer look at that in a moment. Okay, and um, this screen might be familiar from the volunteer 1.0 if you've seen it. Uh, so far we've gotten as far as identifying uh, or specifying what our volunteer project is. Now we're going to talk about the specific needs that we need met within that. Um, so for river cleanup, um, none of these rules <laughs> are a great match for that, but um, oh, is there a cleanup crew? Okay, so for uh, river cleanup, we might have something pretty straightforward. We just need, you know, 10 people on the cleanup crew and uh, the schedule type. And there's some help here, uh, which I'll leave open. Uh, but there are a number of uh, a number of different schedule types that you can choose. A set shift has a, a set start time and a, and a specified length. A flexible time frame might be useful for, you know, I have uh, 40 hours of filing to do and I need them done sometime in the month of December. Um, you're not too picky about when it gets done, but you have a time frame. Uh, and um, open until filled is it probably most useful if you have, say, uh, almost like a volunteer position. Um, I need a graphic designer. It's kind of open. Uh, so for this I'll select set shift. Um, so we'll say it's an hour long. And uh, I can add more roles as needed here. Um, but for, for this example I think we'll just go from here. Okay, and now I'm going to hop into um, anonymous browser here so that I can see um, what the volunteer experience looks like. Uh, so I'll go through first. Here's the river cleanup that we just input. And um, I can click the icon here to get some more details. Um, and there are also roles on, uh, there are also descriptions on some of these roles here. So uh, it might be pretty obvious what a math tutor is, but sometimes the role names uh, need a little elaboration. So you can click this and, you know, a math tutor uh, for grades one through eight, maybe not what I want to do if, um, you know, I was thinking of advanced math. And so I'm just going to do one now so that I can show you um, the additional signups that you, if you're signing up a whole group. So, uh, but you know, I can select as, as many as I want here um, as a volunteer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sign up for this opportunity. And um, you can see the questions that we entered. Uh, uh, up here, and um, I can also say I'm bringing five people with me. And so that second set of questions that we selected uh, shows up, and I have a place to sign up uh, all of my coworkers or friends or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to go back now and show you uh, the shopping cart bit. Um, 
So I'm going to choose. Okay, I'm going to choose the four mile run and the Utah Park cleanup. And I'm also going to choose um, one of these that says anytime. Um, and so when I sign up, uh, I get a summary of the things that I'm signing up for. Uh, so I'm making a lot of different commitments at different times. Um, but it's cool because I only have to fill the form out once. And uh, what we're seeing here is each of these uh, different uh, volunteer opportunities has its own set of questions that folks are being asked to answer at the time of sign up. And this form is kind of mashing them all together and, uh, and of course, you know, removing duplicate questions and giving them a, a more streamlined sign up process. So I'll go ahead and do this one all the way through. Right, so date of last tetanus vaccination, uh, definitely interesting uh, to know if you're doing uh, park cleanup. Um, hopefully not something you're asking folks who are volunteering to do mass tutoring. And um, so I'll supply the other required fields here. And I get a confirmation message that I'm scheduled to volunteer. And I'm brought back to sign up for more things, uh, should I desire to do so. And um, so this will have uh, kicked off emails to all of the volunteer coordinators for those three separate projects, uh, as well as a confirmation email to myself. And um, let's jump back to. Uh, the administrator's view here. And I believe it was the math tutoring that I signed up for for Abington. So let's have a look at assigned volunteers. Yeah. So um, I signed up for a flexible need. Um, you know, use me anytime, anywhere. Uh, and so I show up in this list on the right here. And um, uh, so this is a relatively simple project. There's only there's only one item here, but uh, now I can, you know, assign myself to, or the administrator can assign Frank, who happens to be me, <laughs> uh, to whichever role is appropriate. Okay, and um, having. Uh, another look at uh, kind of the next steps from the administrator's point of view. So I've, I've defined my volunteer needs. I've um, published some forms where people can sign up. Uh, I've assigned volunteers. Um, actually, there's a little more we could look at with the assigned volunteers. Um, so here's an example of one that has more, more going on. There are a lot more needs going on. And uh, so folks who sign up in general who don't pick a specific slot, they'll show up on the left column here. Also, if I get a call on the phone, um, I can add them kind of to the, to the pool of potential volunteers and assign them as needed. Um, if, I, if there's a particular role that I'm having a hard time filling, uh, for instance, the cleanup crew here, uh, we need 100 people for it, or 99 people, and I've only got one. So I can go ahead and I can hit search. And um, this pops up uh, uh, some, some uh, basically a search form. And um, let's see, where did I put Saturday evening? I'm trying to remember where I put all my test data. So I got um, these people who have indicated in the past that Saturday evening is uh, uh, a time that they're available to volunteer. Uh, and we could search by, by other things too. We could 
put a group in this list. Um, so I'll just select all of them since I need 99 and uh, hit assign. And you can see that the, the list is filling up here. Um, another new feature in City Volunteer 2.0, which uh, is going to be useful to volunteer coordinators, is kind of a day of roster. Um, so uh, let me pop open this assignment again. So we've got a number of assignments here, a number of different people who are supposed to show up at different times. And um, so now we have a, a report that we can use on the day of. And um, this is a a responsive page, it's intended to be accessible uh, from your phone. And uh, so I have links here for who's showing up when and what they're doing, and uh, links that I can use to text or call them or email them. Uh, these links aren't going to text or call them through CiviCRM. The idea here is you're, you're at your event, it's the day of, Irene Adams hasn't shown up. Um, let me call her and, and make sure she's coming, because if not, I've got to scramble and, and find someone else to do um, her job. OK. Um, I think next on the list here is the uh, ability to, to log hours for people. So um, it's important to keep track of uh, what the volunteer um, what the volunteer commitments were versus uh, their actual performance and um, so this screen allows us to do uh, just that um, we can mark people as completed you know the whole duration 60 minutes uh, we can mark people as as a no-show um, and we can uh, we can report that they were there, uh, you know, half as long as they said they would be there. I can add folks on the fly, so uh, maybe uh, Jane Alexander showed up without telling anyone. I can um, write down that she took tickets for, uh, you know, for an hour, even though we weren't expecting her. Um, so uh, once you've logged the hours, uh, it's kind of the, the end of your, of your event. Um, so the next thing you'll be interested in is probably running reports. And um, volunteer report is uh, Pretty similar to what we've had in previous versions here. Um, so we can filter by uh, the different times of the activity. Uh, we can get a list of, you know, who are the no-shows, because I'm, I'm putting them on a list, and they're not going to be allowed to volunteer anymore. I'm not sure I have any no-shows in the data to show here. No, it looks like I don't. Um, Pretty standard um, city serum reporting here. Um, I think I covered all of the big points. Um, looks like we have some questions in the chat, so I'm going to skim through that real quick here and um, and see if I can answer those. And uh, go ahead and, and post your questions if you have them. So Robert asks, can I see that your part one can be approved? Uh, I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure I understand the question here. I think, uh, I think what Robert's asking about are scheduled reminders before volunteer projects. I see. Um, well, I have I have some good news about that. Uh, the scheduled reminders integration with uh, CIVI Volunteer um, wasn't possible until the release of CIVI CRM version 4.7. The scheduled reminders uh, interface and uh, underlying code was not very extensible. So it worked pretty well for CIVI CRM core, but it wasn't something that you could plug in an extension um, to take advantage of that. Uh, so there's some very limited scheduled reminding that you can do uh, out of the box. Um, we actually have on our roadmap to, uh, so working with the core team, we, we worked on that issue of making the scheduled reminders play nicer with Civi Serum extensions. Um, and so that was released in 4.7, and that's on our roadmap now to take advantage of those improvements so that uh, we could send a reminder uh, automatically an hour before an event, a day before an event, the day after an event, whatever the case may be. And um, yes, everything that we're showing you here uh, is out of the box with um, with Civi CRM and with Civi Volunteer. So uh, that there's a question in here whether this was expensive customization. Um, so all the customization um, where all of the development is encapsulated in the Civi Volunteer extension. So if you just install this, you'll get pretty much um, what you're seeing here. And uh, I actually realized I jumped over something here. Um, there's another page. Um, there's another page that you can use to collect general volunteer interest. So, so there are probably going to be two streams of, uh, of entry of volunteers into your system. One of them might be uh, that shopping cart page where uh, you know, I might come to your site knowing what I want to volunteer for, knowing when my availability is, and just go out and pick uh, a volunteer opportunity and, and sign up just like that. Um, I also might not be so decisive, and, and I might just come to you and say, uh, I'm interested in volunteering. Um, you know, keep me in the know. Uh, I'm not making any specific commitments. So um, the, uh, this page, Volunteer Join, uh, allows you to collect that information from people. And this is a customizable page. Um, through point and click, you can add custom fields, or, uh, or whatever you like. And actually, let me show you. We can actually add a, a slider widget on here to collect uh, different levels of ability. So um, so CV Volunteer uh, includes this slider widget, which I'm about to show you. In order to use it, you have to uh, go to the custom field and check this box. Uh, and there is some help text here uh, explaining how it all works. Uh, I won't leave that up for too long because uh, it's probably small on your screen. But um, just so you know, if there are questions while you're doing this, we do try to put in contextual help uh, every step along the way. Um, so now let's have a look at that, that public page that I was just showing you. So that page is controlled with a profile, um, like many Civi Serum forms. And we're just going to go in here and we're going to add that camera skill level field. And now when we refresh the page, um, 
we have uh, a new widget here. Uh, so this allows me to collect information uh, on a continuum. Um, so I'm selecting maybe you know uh, I'm interested, I'm 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 an expert, anywhere in between, and all of these all of these stops, all of these labels are are customizable. So if, if master isn't right and you want to call it expert, that's uh, within your power to change. Um, the nice thing is, suppose I'm going back to the screen where I was trying to match um, I was trying to fill a position uh, that was that was difficult um, to fill. And I do a search. Um, suppose I don't need an expert camera person. I just need someone who's done it before. Um, I probably am not going to get any search results here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for, you know, not an expert. But if experts are all I have, I want to use them, right? So you need to be at least as good as an apprentice uh, for me for you to be useful to me. So let's go ahead and fill this out as um, and I'll just say that I'm a uh, an expert cameraman. Uh, when I come back here and run another search, um, I find that cameraman um, is is a match for the job. He's at least uh, as good as an apprentice. Um, so it's a nice way to allow people to specify their skill levels, um, and but for searching to, to be made a little easier for you. Um, okay, I see I've missed some questions as I was kind of going on on that point. Um, Jessica was asking if she were a charter school and they had a volunteer obligation by parents, is there a way to report on whether or not they've met that volunteer obligation of a certain number of hours? Um, for instance, uh, each parent has, you know, as a member of the charter school has you know, has to fulfill four hours of um, classroom, you know, classroom assistance. So okay. Be a teacher assistant for four hours. I'm, I'm with you. Am I, am I getting that right, Kate? Or excuse me, am I getting that right, Jessica? Okay. Yes. Okay. So I think for that we would want to have a look at our um, our reports. Um, so this report actually doesn't have aggregation. Um, so I can report on uh, particular activities. So if I wanted to say, um, give me a list of everyone who's volunteered this month, or give me a list of um, everyone who's volunteered this year or volunteered for a particular kind of uh, role, I, I could do that. Getting the aggregation of um, how many hours has a person volunteered um, is going to be a little more difficult uh, in the report, although you could take this report and export it to a spreadsheet and um, run some run your numbers that way. I wonder, you might actually be able to use one of the core reports for this. I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll get back to you. I think the um, at minimum, uh, you should be able to run a report of what the activities are and, and what the hours are and take that 
information and dump it to somewhere where you can do whatever ma manipulation you need. Oh, there is another question. Yeah, there are questions coming in from a couple of different places. Um, so Madeline asks, uh, does limiting the number of volunteers close the registration once that value, uh, value has been met? Yes. So um, if we're uh, looking at things as a volunteer, Uh, if the uh, math tutoring has only one open position, once it's filled, it, 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 it will fall off this list. Uh, likewise, if there are dates and times associated with uh, a volunteer opportunity, uh, if it's not filled and, the, and, they, and they, the dates pass, it'll fall off this list. Um, we try to keep this list uh, tidy and relevant to, to the site visitors. So um, things get cleaned up um, as as activities change. Um, I guess I I glossed over this form a little bit here. Um, so if I know who I'm interested in volunteering for, say um, say my organization you know represents uh, numerous volunteers in in the local area, and I might have uh, volunteer opportunities with the animal shelter or whatever. Um, I can, as the volunteer or potential volunteer, filter just the ones I want. Um, I can filter by date. I can filter by what it is that I want to do, um, receptionist, data entry, dog walker, whatever. And I can also search for um, stuff that's near me. So. Uh, Dan, can you give me a zip code that will have data? 22206. 22206. Uh, so if I just want to find the volunteer opportunities that are within a, a mile of my house, um, I can do that. Um, so Jessica is asking about if you have a super popular opportunity that can you make a separate opportunity that's a wish list? Um, I think a, our approach to addressing that question um, has been a little different. So let's jump back to um, let's say the math tutoring here. So the math tutoring we need uh, we only need five volunteers, um, but if I check this box that allows users to sign up without specifying a shift, that's um, checking that box puts the project in this list here where you see you know any role at any time. Um, so doing that, uh, there is no number on that, so your overflow will go there. So if you do want to have kind of a wait list for volunteers. I would say go ahead and, and check that box so that people have uh, a place to go. Um, they, won't get a, they won't get a confirmation email until they're, they're making the role of that, right? No, they'll get a, a confirmation email that they're signed up to, to volunteer. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, as, as the volunteer coordinator will get that email as well. So if they've got more volunteers than they have basis for, it's incumbent on them to you know, handle the communications with the volunteers. Um, I did kind of uh, gloss over a couple other things on the screen, the public and enabled checkboxes here. Um, you might have some uh, volunteer opportunities in your project that are a little sensitive or that maybe um, you, you kind of want to hand pick um, who the volunteers are. So if you don't check public, um, it won't show up on that screen, um, the shopping cart screen. 
uh, and you might fill that one yourself using um, the assigned volunteer screen using the search features or, or dragging people from your available list. Um, and then enabled is, is just, you know, is this published or, whoops, didn't mean to open that up. Is this published or, um, you know, I'm still working on this. Don't consider it live or, or real until I check the box and, and I'm done. Uh, so there's another question. Um, will volunteers be able to see who the other volunteers are? Um, by default, no. Um, but it would be very easy to build uh, a, a directory um, if you wanted to, uh, filtering on volunteers for a particular opportunity or at a, holding a particular role or whatever. Um, I think you could do that, I haven't tried it, I think you could do that using um, a Civi Serum profile or a Drupal view. Has anyone ever tried rendering the volunteer list as an actual calendar rather than a descending list of opportunities? Would it be possible to do this through Drupal view? Um, I think it would be possible to do it through Drupal views. It's not something that um, the folks that I've been working with um, have asked for. When you get a lot of, calendars are tricky. When you get a lot of uh, activity, the calendar becomes quickly unmanageable. And when you only have a few opportunities and they're spread out over several months, then your calendar looks a little sad and empty. Um, so the, the list, is a nice way to just uh, present the information. Um, but I do think you could do it uh, with views. It would take a little bit of work on filtering the right types of activities because uh, CV Volunteer introduces some entities uh, which are not part of CORE, the volunteer project and the volunteer need. And um, I'm not aware that those are exposed to Drupal views, although the core activity, which is how the volunteer uh, sign up is represented, um, is. Uh, and if your volunteer project is associated with an event, um, actually, we don't need to create a new event. Um, then you can you can filter on events. Um, so in previous versions of Civi Volunteer, uh, Volunteer was kind of a subcomponent of the event, um, and so we've got uh, a lot more functionality in Volunteer now. But uh, some people are really uh, find value in associating volunteers with their events. For instance, if you have a year-end gala and you need um, a bunch of people to staff that, um, it makes sense to tie all of that together in one place. Um, so you can do that now. And uh, those associations will show up on the Manage Volunteer Projects page. Um, so all of, the, all of the data in this example um, is, is standalone, but if I were to create a volunteer project uh, associated with an event, it would show up in this list here, which I can do if anyone's interested. Neil asks if we can customize the confirmation emails. Um, and the answer is yes. Uh, so I'll show you, it's handled the way that um, many other uh, email workflows uh, are. So if you go to message templates and um, check, 
system workflow messages. There's a new online volunteer registration uh, template. Um, there is a lot of logic in this template because we're allowing volunteers to filter uh, to sign up for multiple volunteer opportunities at once. And so we are um, uh, we are uh, looping through all of the different things that they signed up for and filling out a table based on that. So uh, there is, of course, you can make other changes to that, but there's a lot of power there. You can look through and uh, expose information that you know we didn't think of doing, um, and add, you know add whole columns to the table uh, that uh, ships out of the box. Uh, so I should say this demo is running on CIVI CRM 4.6. Um, it has been tested uh, pretty thoroughly against 4.6. So uh, after this uh, webinar wraps up, I'm going to um, slap, slap it in a box and, <laughs> and, and upload it uh, so that it's available from the extensions directory. If you already have CIVI Volunteer installed, you'll uh, see a notice uh, probably today, maybe tomorrow, depending on how often the, the store gets updated, um, that you can, that you, uh, an upgrade is available for you. Uh, we've done some testing against 4.7, um, and I think we're at least 95% compatible with 4.7. So I'm going to have a quick look at uh, some of the issues that have been reported there. Um, and if, uh, if they're easy to fix, then our first release will be compatible with both versions. If not, it might take another day or two. Are there any other questions folks have or um, anything anything you'd like me to show you or uh, Kate is asking if there's a demo site for this. Um, we can make the demo publicly available. Yeah, we have been um, have been doing civivolunteer.ginkostreet.com uh, as the demo site for or the publicly accessible demo site. Um, I can go ahead and rebuild this uh, with the 2.0 version. Also, the CiviCRM demo site, demo.civicrm.org. Um, at least the Drupal site will, will have um, that built into it uh, if it doesn't already. You can actually make this demo available after the model. OK. Yeah, the um, WordPress demo. So this is a Civi CRM extension. It it plugs into Civi CRM um, and not into the CMS. So that's a bonus. Um, uh, it's compatible with with Drupal and WordPress. Um, Joomla has a less good integration with Civi CRM in general, um, and I think that will affect the user experience in Civi Volunteer. Uh, I can go into detail on that for anyone who's really interested, but it's a little esoteric. Um, so the extension will work uh, on, on Drupal or WordPress. It, it might not be in the um, WordPress demo uh, because the build, uh, the build for that demo site might just not include it. But I know the Drupal one uh, 
does, at least for earlier versions of City Volunteer. So I'll make sure that the new version, uh, I'll make sure that that build script gets updated so that the 2.0 release is used instead of an older one. Jessica, you asked for the first URL. Are you looking for the URL for the slides or for the actual demo? Okay, so the site that I've been showing, um, the site that I've been showing is this one, demo.ginkostreet.com. Um, that won't be publicly available for another day or two. Um, this one, uh, I can I can update that uh, later today, and you can log in uh, using demo as the username and demo as the password, and um, have a whack at it. Uh, it. Um, yeah, it, presently it is using a, a, an earlier beta version, so there are probably bugs on that. So um, if you can give us a few hours to, to get to that, um, you'll be happier. So we kind of handled questions in line. Um, happy to take some more if anything else is on your mind. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Sure. Uh, well, let me try it. Sometimes this goes uh, horribly wrong because of feedback and things. But um, if anyone is wearing headphones right now, you might want to turn down the volume <laughs> in case there is feedback. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and unmute so people can speak instead of type. Uh, and hopefully, if you're not speaking, uh, please uh, mute your microphone so that uh, we don't get too much noise. You are now unmuted. Okay. Um, okay. If there are any um, questions, you should be able to just ask them out loud. If there are any questions, you should be able to just ask them out loud. Phone cut off thanks for the webinar. Okay. Well, if there are uh, no other questions, um, again, well, uh, I'm Frank uh, and uh, I'm with King Street Labs. Uh, Frank and uh, if there are features you'd like to see in Civi Volunteer that aren't there, or if you have other um, Civi like CRM uh, needs, uh, um, basically what we do all day. Um, and we'd be happy to talk with you about it. Um, and if you'd like to uh, follow up or email me questions privately or get on the phone, um, all my contact info is on this last slide. Okay. Well, it looks like um, looks like we're out of questions, and we're about to hit the uh, hour mark. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the call. So thanks again for everyone who joined us, and uh, do feel free to follow up if you have any questions. Um, yeah, we're really excited to to be releasing this today, and uh, really excited about all the folks who've been involved with. Uh, yeah. Getting it to where it is, and, and all the folks who've been involved, um, uh, and getting it to where it collaborating is. with us on on 
filling this niche. Collaborating with us on, on Thanks everyone. Filling this niche. Thanks everyone.